The Origins of Proto-Semites Where is the best place of the origins for Proto-Semites? We covered the many origins of Proto-Semites, mainly the Horn of Africa, Eastern Sahara, North Africa, and the Levant with the Natufians. The Semitic family is a member of the larger Afro-Asiatic family, all of whose other five or more branches have their origin in North Africa or the Maghreb. Largely for this reason, the ancestors of Proto-Semitic speakers were originally believed by some to have first arrived in the Middle East from North Africa, possibly as part of the operation of the Saharan pump around the late Neolithic. This was in red. In green, it says, Dankoff sees Semitic originating between the Nile Delta and Canaan as the northernmost branch of Afro-Asiatic. In blue, it reads, Bench even wonders whether the highly divergent Greg languages indicate an origin in Ethiopia, with the rest of Ethiopic Semitic a later back migration. And in yellow it reads, according to Christy G. Turner II, there is archaeological and physical anthropological reason for a relationship between the modern Semitic speaking populations of the Levant and the Natufian culture. So as you can see on the image to the left, or to the right, excuse me, the various places where Afro-Asiatic and where Semitic could have originated from, and as we see from the readings that we just read, in red, there's a North African origin. In green, there is a, now between the Nile Delta and Canaan origin, and in blue, a Ethiopian or Horn of Africa origin, and in yellow, a Levantine Natufian origin. But from an academic point of view, which one is the best? This is what we're going to find out today using an old earth model. Remember what the old earth perspective is. Old earth creationism, also known as OEC, is a form of creationism which includes day-age creationism, gap creationism, and, and progressive creationism. Broadly speaking, OEC, Old Earth Creationism, occupies a middle ground between Young Earth Creationism, YEC, and Theistic Evolution, TE. Now, if you want to learn more about Old Earth Creationism, I actually have a video that deals with Old Earth Creationism and even Young Earth Creationism. But if you want a more deeper understanding of what it's what it means, I have a playlist that deals with a very in-depth understanding of old earth creationism from various uh, academics in the Abrahamic faith. But check these videos out for a more deeper in-depth understanding. Again, this is in my playlist, Old Earth Creationism, as it is titled, and this will help you understand a little bit more about it. So we know that Semites are Afro-Asiatic people. We also know most Afro-Asiatics are haplogroup E. As we said before, Afro-Asiatic of or relating to or being a family of languages widely distributed over Southwestern Asia and Africa, including Semitic and Semitic of relating to or consisting a, a subfamily of the Afro-Asiatic language family that includes Hebrew. And of course, the Israelites, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the way to Shem, they are a Semitic people. And we know according to uh, this journal from Human Journal of Human Genetics, this paper says the Proto-Afro-Asiatic group carrying the E-P2 mutation may have appeared at, some, at this point in time and subsequently gave rise to the different major population groups 
including current speakers of the Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralist populations. This was from Y chromosome E haplogroups, their distribution and implication to the origin of Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralism. Therefore, this study will focus on haplogroup E as the marker of Semitic people. Therefore, our goal is to establish why haplogroup E is proto-Semitic. This is important because why DNA haplogroups are passed down from father to son. The genealogy of Israel is also passed down from father to son, just like a haplogroup would. As we know in Genesis chapter 11, this is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. After he begot Arphaxad, Shem lived 500 years and begot sons and daughters. And then from Genesis chapter 11, 10 through 26, it reads, Arphaxad, Shelah, Eber, Heleg, Ru, Serg, Nahor. Now Terah lived 70 years and begot Abraham. This is a complete genealogy of male of a male lineage going back to Abraham to Shem. And this fits exactly with a haplogroup. Paternal haplogroups. A paternal haplogroup relates to your Y chromosome. And since that is the sex determining chromosome for men, it is passed down from father to son. As women don't have a Y chromosome, they will not have a paternal haplogroup by default. However, if the, however, they are able to find out what their paternal haplogroup is if a male relative from the father's side, ideally a brother, father, uncle, or grandfather, is also tested. But the main thing you need to keep in mind is this. The paternal haplogroup relates to your Y chromosome. And since that is the sex determining chromosome for men it is passed down from father to son just like the genealogy going from Shem all the way down to Abraham from Abraham all the way down to Isaac a perfect male line lineage furthermore our goal is to figure out the best likely genotype of proto-Semites, as well as the point of origin from whence they originated. And again, this is from an old earth perspective. Conclusion. The two of the best scenarios for the origins of proto-Semites is either Northern Africa or the Levantine Natukins. No matter where proto-Semites came from, they would still have basal North African ibero marusian DNA. If Semites came from the Natufians, they would still carry this North African DNA because Natufians also had this North African DNA. Therefore, modern Semitic populations still carry this ibero marusian DNA. Therefore, I would say that basal North African DNA can be an indicator of proto-Semitic ancestry. Also, haplogroup E from a paternal lineage found among ancient Levantine populations is the best candidate for the Y DNA of proto-Semites since Semites expanded from the Levant and descend from PPNB Levantine Natufian populations and that they had only haplogroup E. Again, East Arabians also displayed the highest levels of the basal Eurasian lineage of all tested modern populations. Not surprisingly, East Arabians were also the ones with higher similarity with ibero marusians who were so far the best proxy for the basal Eurasians among known ancient specimens. Our results are, our results are strong evidence to include the Hazid Basin of Arabo-Persian Gulf 
as possible homeland of the basal Eurasians to be investigated further on namely by searching ancient Arabian human specimens. And the Natufians consists consisted of 61.2% Arabian and 21.2% Northern African, there goes your Northern African, and 10.9% Western Asian and 6.8% Omotic ancestry. And keep in mind that Northern African would likely be a Biromerusian, ancient Northern African because Natufians are ancient people themselves. And such a scenario would also explain the presence of Y chromosome haplogroup E in the Natufians and Levantine farmers, a common link between the Levant and Africa. Again, the two most likely origins for Semites, North Africa or the Levant. The Semitic family is a member of the larger Afroasiatic family, all of whose other five or more branches have their origin in North Africa or the Maghreb. Largely for this reason, the ancestors of proto-Semitic speakers were originally believed by some to have first arrived in the Middle East from North Africa, possibly as part of the operation of the Saharan pump around the late Neolithic. That's the North African origin. Now for the Levant origin. According to Christy G. Turner II, there is an archaeological and physical anthropological reason for, for a relationship between the modern Semitic speaking populations of the Levant and the Natufians. The Levant and North Africa are the two best origins for proto Semites. Remember, our goal is to figure out who are the ancient Israelites. And their descendants today. Since the Israelites are an Afro-Asiatic Semitic people, we have to know the origins of Proto-Semites. Proto-Semitic populations would be the ancestors of the Israelites. And this is what we found out today. The two most best origins for the ancestors of the Israelites. North Africa or the Levant with the Natufi. As the genealogy goes, Israel are from Shem. They are Semitic. Their ancestors, proto-Semites. And here is even the distribution of ancient Semitic and modern Semitic people. According to an old earth perspective, the two best locations for the origins of Semites would be North Africa and Levant Natufians. Cannot stress this enough. With that being said, when it comes to the genome of proto Semites, the Israelites and Israel's descendants, I expect to find a people with one, basal North African DNA. They should have some type of North African DNA. Since, it, since one, if they're coming from North Africa, then obviously they're going to have North African DNA. But two, if they're coming from Natufians, the Natufians the themselves had ancient North African DNA. So we should see North African, basal North African DNA. And we even see it in modern Middle Easterners today. The second thing we should find is Neolithic Levantine slash Natufian DNA. This is something that Semites should have. Uh, modern people who claim to be from Israel should have. We see Neolithic Levantine DNA in modern Middle Easterners. And if the proto-Semites, if they came from North Africa, they have to pass through the Levant where they would obtain the Neolithic Levantine DNA. But if Semites originate from the Tufians themselves, then obviously they would have this Neolithic Levantine Natufian DNA. So look for Natufian DNA. That's one thing that we'll be looking for. And of course, Y chromosome haplogroup E. As we've seen many times over and over again, most linguists and geneticists do allude to the idea, to the fact that haplogroup E is a proto-Semitic marker. It is a Semitic marker of ancient or ancestral or old Semitic populations. We see it if, if Semites were coming out of North Africa or if Semites were even coming from the Levant. 
E would have been present. So when it comes to finding out the genome, again, the genome of proto-Semites, the Israelites, and Israel's descendants, look for basal North African DNA, Neolithic Levantine slash Natufian DNA, and Y chromosome haplogroup E. This is for the Semitic side. So, from everything we've gathered so far, the ancestors of Proto-Semites, Basal Eurasians, Ibero-Marusians, and Natufians, the Proto-Semites themselves, basically the remains found at Umbud in Kish, the way Semites depict them, depicted themselves in the murals of Mari Syria, Proto-Semites would have looked African, specifically their phenotype would be dark skin, brown to black, hair color, black, hair texture, woolly to curly. Basal Eurasians, Ibero-Marusians, the Natufians, ancestors of Semites, and the Semites themselves, the Proto-Semites from Mari, Syria, an ancient Semitic civilization. And I have image to the left that kind of does fit with, with the exact same skin tone and hair texture and eye texture that we see. This is what proto-Semites, early Semites, ancestors of Semites would have looked. So this is very important because it gives us an idea as to how the ancestors of Israel and the Israelites themselves and the descendants of Israel could look today if they remained homogenous. From an old earth perspective, their phenotype could be African. After all, early Semites were Africans and early West Asians resembled Africans. After all, the early Semites were just a few Africans arriving to find a lot of other people already in the area, Christopher Eret. Early West Asians resembled Africans. Again, this is from comparison of cranial, feature, cranial facial features of major human groups. And to the right of the screen, and I even have a what someone made their own interpretation of what proto-Semites would have looked like. And it's uh, probably not wrong. It's probably exactly what they sort of would look. And again, the Israelites themselves are Semites. This is very important, knowing who they are ethnically as a people. They are descendants of Shem. So, this is where I conclude when it comes to the origins of proto-Semites, specifically from an old earth perspective. And hopefully, y'all understood everything. Leave your comment if you have any questions. I'll be sure to answer them. And at the end of a full series, I will try to do my best to have a Q&A. But hopefully, everything was understood.